Hello, Keith Ruck here at VisionMachinery.org. Well, I'm out at the George Museum of Agriculture today. I'm standing next to our steam locomotive. And if you've watched my channel a lot, you've probably seen this locomotive and you're thinking, well, something's missing. <laughs> well, there is. Uh, we've had to do some uh, pretty major uh, overhaul of some stuff unexpectedly on the locomotive. And I thought I'd give you guys an update on what's going on here. Uh, I've been involved with this project to a certain extent, quite honestly though, because I've been working and they've been doing this uh, during the week when I'm at work. Uh, I haven't been able to help out a lot with it, but uh, I have been out here periodically pitching in. Uh, don't really have a lot of video of us uh, working on this. I did take some pictures, but I did want to kind of give you an update. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, as we were doing uh, our maintenance on the locomotive that we do every year in August or what have you, we were, we had a boiler company come out and pull the refractory out of the inside of the firebox to replace it. It was in uh, starting to get in kind of bad shape and need to be replaced. It's something you have to do from time to time. But when they pulled the old refractory out, they exposed the, uh, the inside liner of the boiler and uh, the, the flue sheet or tube sheet where the tubes in the back of the of the firebox, the tubes go through the boiler. Um, unfortunately, we'd had a tube or two that had a little leak in it, and it was allowing some moisture to get between the refractory and the boiler plate. And over a period of time, and probably in combination with uh, uh, just combining with the combustibles in the in the in the firebox, uh, creating a very acidic, corrosive. Uh, fluid that was in there and it has just started eating away at the, the actual tube sheet. Now it wasn't really a safety concern, there was still plenty of metal there, but there was some pretty significant pitting in there. And the big issue was, is the pitting was so bad that they couldn't get the tubes to seal up when they tried to seal them. Um, so basically what we are having to have done is we're having to have that entire tube sheet cut out of the old boiler and, and replaced with a new tube sheet. Very, um, very intensive, very invasive, and very expensive uh, repair. But uh, anyway, that's where we are. Uh, the job could have been done on site, but quite honestly, we were going to save a lot of money if we took the boiler off the locomotive and sent it up to uh, the boiler shop that's going to do the work for us so where they could do it on site in their facilities. Uh, so that's what we opted to do. So uh, over the last course of the last week or so, we've been taking the, the whole locomotive apart uh, from the basically the chassis up one piece at a time and uh, getting it ready, getting that boiler ready to, to ship off. So to give you an idea of the kind of jigsaw puzzle we're dealing with, uh, we, we took a piece of plywood, put over here on the Vance planer matcher, kind of created a temporary table out of it and have been stacking up a lot of the parts off the inside of the locomotive. Most of this came out of the cab. This is the piping, steam piping, uh, valves, uh, everything pretty much, all the individual little pieces. And we took them off one at a time. They've been labeled. We took a ton of pictures. Uh, I've actually, we've actually done this before. I actually have, the last time all this stuff got put in, I put it in. So uh, I have experience doing this. Um, I know it looks like a mess, guys, and it is a mess, but uh, uh, it, it, it'll go back together fairly easily, I hope. Uh, at least last time it did. So, uh, but anyway, we got a pile of a jigsaw puzzle over here of different parts and pieces that got pulled off the boiler, uh, inside the cab, all over the locomotive as we were getting it ready uh, to pull the boiler off the actual locomotive. The bigger parts are kind of just sitting out here in the in the drive right now. Of course, here's the cab. We were able to unbolt it and uh, pull it off in one piece. There's the sand domes and the steam domes. Uh, smokestack, there's the, the fire box or the front end of the smoke box. Uh, run, running boards, you know, all these different pieces uh, that we had to take off. Uh, we don't really have an overhead crane out here. Fortunately, uh, we've got a, a couple of pretty good forklifts and uh, we can kind of go in and use some chains and lift with that. Um, we did take the entire uh, boiler off and uh, once we got it off, we also had the saddle tank that sits on top of the boiler that uh, holds the fresh water that we put into the boiler, basically our water tank. We sent both of those up to the boiler shop. Uh, while they were doing some work, we actually sent the saddle tank up, even though it's not a 
pressurized vessel, there were some areas in it that were needing some repair work as well. So they're going to actually uh, repair both the boiler and the saddle tank uh, while they got everything up at the, at the boiler shop. And what we got left uh, on the tracks here, uh, this is, you know, the, the wheels, the frame, uh, got the steam engines. Um, all that part is, is right here. And while we've got this apart, we're probably going to take this opportunity to go in here and um, number one, we'll pull this out, get it all steam cleaned up. It's, it's a mess right this minute, uh, but we're going to do a real good inspection of everything while we've got it apart. Um, you, you know, we've got a pit we can get under the, 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 the locomotive, but really it's hard to be in a position where you can really get in here and from the top and like look down in here on the, uh, where the, the valve gears go onto the, the eccentrics on the, on the wheel and all that. So all this is going to be inspected. Uh, if we find any problems or issues, now's the time to work on it. So we will go ahead and, and be doing that over the next couple of weeks. Probably looking at two to three weeks uh, for the boiler to be up at the boiler shop. Uh, and again, while that's going on, there's, there's some things we want to get done uh, since we have the opportunity. I've actually got a list of several projects, um, little p p bits and pieces, uh, some new parts that need to be made, some repairs we're going to do to some things uh, while we got things apart. <coughs> so I'll probably have some good video opportunities for you guys to see some individual repairs on just bits and pieces off the locomotive uh, over the next uh, few weeks or months as I have time to get out here and do this. Once we get the boiler back, it'll go back on and then we'll start reassembling things. Um, if it's possible and if I'm, you know, when I have time to come out here and be involved in some of that, I'll see about shooting some video. Um, quite honestly, you know, again, even though I, I, I was out here for part of the disassembly, but we were just working so fast and furious, you know, there's not a lot of room up in the cab when you're pulling steam pipes and stuff off to have cameras in there, particularly when you got multiple people and swinging pipes around. So it really wasn't a good videoing opportunity. Uh, and then too, we were quite honestly in a rush to get it done and, and anytime you set the camera up it basically doubles the amount of time it takes to do anything it seems like so uh, again no real video on this but I wanted to give you guys an update I thought you'd find it interesting um, and hopefully we'll have our locomotive back up and running again very soon uh, we've got some events in December around Christmas that we're planning on running we always do a North Pole Express uh, in Christmas. We have a Victorian Christmas uh, celebration out here at the museum as well. And uh, we really want to have the locomotive back up and running by then. Uh, you know, I'm shooting this video toward the end of September, uh, which gives us a little over two months uh, to get everything done. Like I said, it'll take about three weeks probably to, until we get the boiler back and then we'll start reassembling things. Hopefully we can meet those deadlines. Hopefully we won't run into any major snags along the way. Uh, but again, I thought you guys would enjoy seeing this. You don't get to see <clears throat> a locomotive taken apart very often and uh, you don't get to participate in disassembling and reassembling a locomotive very often. But a uh, fun little project wasn't on the, wasn't on the agenda, I promise you, uh, but it became necessary and uh, we're going to get it done. Fortunately, uh, the museum and Abraham Ball and Agricultural College, who is over the museum when we discovered these problems. Uh, even though the money for these repairs were really just not in the budget, they came up with the money uh, to make sure we're going to have this uh, locomotive back up and running as quickly as possible uh, because it is a major part of the museum and a major attraction uh, here at the museum. So with that, uh, a little short, quick update video. Uh, not a whole lot of content, but again, I thought you guys would enjoy seeing this. We'll talk to you later.